trigonometric functions and their inverses. We have three main inverse functions that we will use. The first one is the inverse sine function. The inverse sine function will look like y equals inverse sine with a, like a power of a negative 1 of x or y equals arc sine of x. And this is true if and only if at cosine or sorry, sine of y equals x. So it's the opposite. You just switch your letters around. Okay, now the key thing to remember here is we st they still need to be functions. So we need to make sure that they would pass the vertical line test. So we need to set our domain. Our domain would be from negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. And that is because my range of my original sine function was negative 1 to 1. Okay, now my, my domain of my original sine function was infinite. So I got to cut it off because I know it went back and forth. So that's going to be, where does it start repeating? Well, it doesn't repeat from pi over 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to pi over 2. It doesn't use the same y value. So that would be my range. Next, my inverse cosine function is very similar. It can be y equals cosine inverse of x, or it can be arc cosine of x, and that is true if and only if cosine of y equals x. So you just flip around. And again, this one again oscillates back and forth. My original cosine function will go back and forth from negative 1 to positive 1. So that's going to be my domain of my inverse function. And my range is going to be a little different because it was shifted over. So basically our interval here is going to be shifted over. And my range is going to be 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to pi. Because that is where the amount of the graph that it will go through without repeating and having multiple y values. And finally, my inverse tangent function will be y equals the inverse tangent of x or arc tangent of x. And that's if and only if my tangent of y equals my x. All right, now we have to find our domain and range. This one's a little different. I know that my range of my original was all real numbers. And it's OK for my domain to be all real numbers. So so that means my domain is going to be negative infinity is less than x, which is less than positive infinity. And my range is going to be negative pi over 2 is less than y, which is less than pi over 2. And that is your domain and range of inverse tangent. So if we are graphing the inverse sine function, we have y in sine inverse e is of x, we know we're going to go through 0, 0. And my lowest point is negative pi over 2. So this would be negative pi over 4. And it would be the same on the other side, pi over 4 and pi over 2. And going left and right, we are going to label by 1's, which is opposite of the way we did it when we did the sine function. So this would be 1 and 2, negative 1, negative 2. And now my function is going to go from on my x, 1, and down at negative pi over 2, and then up to 1 and positive pi over 2.
and then it's just a curve like that. And it stops there. You have to actually have endpoints. They stop there. And that would be your graph of your inverse sine function. Now the inverse cosine function has a similar numbering system on the x-axis. I'm going to go 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 2. And on the vertical axis, again, it's going to be your pi's. This time I'm going to go negative pi over 2, negative pi, to pi over 2, up to pi because I know I'm going from 0 to pi instead of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's why I numbered it differently. Okay, now my at negative 1, I can type into the calculator and see the inverse so cosine would be up at pi. And when I put 1 in, I would get 0 for my inverse cosine. And then if I put in 0, I should get pi over 2. So my graph is going to look like that. Make sure it's curved. It is not a straight line. So it should be a curved line there. And the last one, the inverse tangent graph, y equals inverse tangent of x. This graph, again, is going to look a little differently. It's going to go side to side forever. So I'm going to go ahead and label it as pi over 2, and pi over 4, negative pi over 4, and pi over 2. Sorry, negative pi over 2. And I know that I'm going to have asymptotes at the y equals pi over 2 and y equals negative pi over 2 because those were my asymptotes of my tangent, only they were x equals. All right, and it's going to go through 0, 0 again, and then it's going to approach the asymptotes. So there's your tangent graph. So again, just like your tangent versus your sine and cosine, your inverse tangent looks just as different as your sine and cosine. Now we're going to use the unit circle to find values of inverse functions. Now if we have the inverse sine of one half, we could look at that as the sine of x, or the sine of y rather, equals x. because those mean the same thing. So that would mean the sine of y equals one-half. So we were looking for one-half on our unit circle from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So if that helps you, then use that way. If not, you just look for one-half from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and you should see that sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half, and it is in our interval. So that means that y is equal to pi over 6. And the next one, we have cosine of negative 1 or sorry, the inverse cosine of negative 1, which is like saying cosine of what equals negative 1, and it's got to be in our interval from 0 to pi. Okay, so we're looking for negative 1 in the interval 0 to pi. Well, that would be x equals pi, because that's in our interval 0 to pi, and that's where my cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. So that's your final answer. And the last one, uh, inverse tangent of negative 1, this one, they have to be the same number, because inverse tangent is sine over cosine, so it's either got to be the 45 degree angle, the pi over 4, or the negative 45 degree angle, negative pi over 4. And if you look at it, one of them is positive, one of them is negative on the negative side. So my tangent, inverse tangent of negative 1 is going to be negative pi over 4 because that's the one where my tangent would be negative. The other tangent is actually positive. Okay, now we're going to graph the inverse function. We have the inverse sine of negative x 
plus pi over 4. So our graph is going to start down at negative pi over 2. Um, so negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 and pi over 2. And it continues like that. And then we have negative 1, negative 2, or sorry, positive 1. And then that would be 2, and that would be negative 2. So my parent function graph is going to go through that curve right there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the negative. So that is flipping it over my y-axis. So that's going to bring it over here. and come down like this because that is a reflection over the y-axis and then finally I'm going to shift it up pi over 4 so every point is going to come up pi over 4 which is going to be one box so my final graph will look like that. And that's all you got to do. All right, in this last example, we're going to graph the inverse function, which is negative inverse cosine of x minus 2. So I'm going to start with my cosine function, which is going to be from negative 1 to 1. And it's going to go through pi over 2. So there's my inverse function. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is the negative, which is going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. So it's going to look like that. All I did was flip it over the x-axis and now what I'm going, the last step is uh, negative 2 and that's inside with the x so I'm going to move all everything right 2. Okay, so all the main points, going to move it over 2. So I am at 3, 0 and then Negative pi over 2 is going to move over two places, which is at the 2. So 2, negative pi over 2. And negative 1 is going to go over to the 1. So 1, negative pi. And my final graph would look like that. Those are your notes over trigonometric functions and their inverses. Make sure you understand the relationship between the function and its inverse. And then you can do the practice problems. Make sure you can graph them and cut off the graphs properly. And make sure you can find inverse functions on the unit circle.